Welcome to the 2020-2021 Training on Daily Operating Procedures and PPE Awareness. This training will help bring an understanding to the precautions, protocols, and procedures necessary for your safety and the safety of others as the COVID-19 pandemic continues to pose a threat to the health and well-being of our school community. During this time, school districts have put procedures in place to ensure that staff, students, and visitors feel safe entering their buildings. The daily operating procedures will require that all employees be screened each day upon arrival to work. The screening questions that may be asked are, since your last day of work or last visit here, have you had any of these symptoms in the last 14 days? Cough, shortness of breath or difficulty breathing, fever or feeling feverish, chills, fatigue, muscle body pain, headache, sore throat, congestion or runny nose, nausea, vomiting, new loss of taste or smell. Have you tested positive for COVID-19 in the past 14 days? Have you had any close contact in the last 14 days with someone with a confirmed or suspected case of COVID-19? These screening questions may be asked of you in several ways, through a sign-in, sign-out sheet prior to coming to work when you badge in, in a Google survey each day, or through other apps that may de be developed during this time of the COVID-19 pandemic. Temperature readings may also accompany the screening questions. It is imperative that you follow your district protocols, such as notifying your supervisor if you are not feeling well, or if you have answered yes to any of the daily screening questions. When re-entering any district building, you are expected to follow all protocols as established by your district. These may include the daily screening process, what access points are to be used when entering into a building, an awareness of areas that may be off limits to staff and or students, hand hygiene practices, hand washing initiatives may be scheduled throughout the day to ensure appropriate hand hygiene is being followed. The district will continue to make any facts known to you as they may change throughout the pandemic. It is vital that if you are not feeling well or may have been exposed to someone who tested positive for COVID-19, that you stay home and contact your supervisor. While at work, it is important for you to know and understand who you can contact with questions or concerns. Social distancing, especially in high traffic areas like hallways or small spaces such as break rooms and bathrooms. The importance of hand hygiene, including when hand sanitizer can be used, as well as proper respiratory etiquette. The protocols for wearing face coverings, including use, care, and when other personal protective equipment or PPE may be required. PPE that fully covers skin and clothing and prevents exposure of the eyes, nose, and mouth is recommended to reduce the risk of accidental self-contamination of mucous membranes or broken skin. To best protect oneself from COVID-19 infection, all applicable masks must have a proper fit to your face. All PPE must be used as part of a comprehensive infection control program that follows the CDC recommendations, the district hazard assessment, and other applicable state and federal regulations. During the COVID-19 pandemic, there may be additional PPE requirements of staff members depending upon the job and exposure. Additional PPE items can include gloves, goggles, face shields, and aprons or gowns. The requirement of additional PPE will be listed in your job hazard assessment, on an SDS sheet specific to the chemical being used, as well as on the label of the cleaning disinfecting product. If you are required to utilize any of the aforementioned PPE, 
you will be trained on the proper use and care of the required PPE. Cloth face coverings are an additional step to help slow the spread of COVID-19 when combined with everyday preventative actions and social distancing in public settings. Cloth face coverings should be washed after each use. It is important to always wear your face coverings properly, that you remove your face covering correctly, and practice appropriate hand hygiene after handling or touching a used face covering. Cleaning and sanitizing can be done through a washing machine. You can include your face covering with your regular laundry. Use regular laundry detergent in the warmest appropriate water setting for the cloth used to make the face covering. Or it can be hand washed with four teaspoons of household bleach per quart of room temperature water. Soak the face covering in the bleach solution for five minutes. Rinse thoroughly with cool or room temperature water. After washing, you can dry your cloth face covering in a number of ways. You can machine dry using the highest heat setting and leaving it in the dryer until the face covering is completely dry. Or you can air dry, laying flat and allowing the face covering to completely dry. If possible, place the face covering in direct sunlight. We've talked about washing and drying and the following video will show how we put on and take off our face coverings. In this video, we are going to discuss the proper use and reuse of face masks. When donning your face mask, you will first perform hand hygiene. When you are ready to don your mask, you will pick it up and place it over your face, making sure you cover both your mouth and your nose. If you have a tie mask, you will first tie the top tie. Once the top is secure, you will tie the bottom tie around your neck. Once the mask is tied, you will gently pat the bridge of your nose so the mask forms to your face. When donning your procedure mask, you'll place it on your face and loop it around each ear. Then you will gently pat it around your face to form it to the bridge of your nose and pull it under your chin. Before removing your mask, you will perform hand hygiene. You doff your procedure mask by unhooking it from your ear. When you are ready to doff your mask, you will first untie the bottom strap, then you will untie the top, and you will place it on a clean paper towel labeled with your name. Be sure that the strings of the mask are not sitting inside the mask. If you're wearing a procedural mask, place it face down on your paper towel like this. Notice that the exterior of the mask is always facing down. This is an example of inappropriate storage of your face mask on your towel because the front of the mask is facing up. This image demonstrates inappropriate wear of the procedure mask. Procedure masks should not be pulled under the mouth or on the chin. You should also not wear your mask around your elbow or any other body part. The surgical mask should never be worn hanging from around your neck. If you determine that you need to remove your mask, you need to completely remove it. It should never be halfway on or halfway off. If you need to place your procedure mask in a brown bag, make sure your brown bag is prepared labeled front and back. After performing hand hygiene, you'll remove your procedure mask and place it in the brown bag, ensuring that the front of the mask is facing the front of the bag. You will want to ensure that the brown bag is open wide enough to place your mask in without contaminating it. This is an incorrect way to place your procedure mask on your brown bag. When you remove your procedure mask to eat or take a break, make sure you still are maintaining your six feet of social distancing this includes break rooms, cafeterias, or conference rooms. If you are unable to maintain your six feet of social distancing, you will need to consider using another room. Thank you for attending this training. If you have any questions or concerns, please feel free to contact your supervisor or the OHM BOCES Safety Office. Have a safe and healthy school year.